Thank you very much for inviting me here. Okay, so now I wanted to, I had planned all sorts of things, but you know, uh, what happens when you arrive at a place to your footwear, for example, decides the course of action. <laughs> so this is a shoe, which is a designer shoe. I won't say the name, I might get sued, but I'm sure everybody who's bought something like this will know. So while I, I haven't worn it for a while, it, I bought it and then I wore it twice and I thought today it goes with this dress, so I pulled it out of the cupboard. So this is probably the third time I'm wearing it. And um, it's obviously made of synthetic stuff. It's been made in a factory. Um, it costs some amount of money, um, but not as much as today. A handmade leather shoe made by one of our old cobblers would cost. So this is something I will chuck away or maybe give to a factory and say, can you please join the soul? And eventually it will find itself into the garbage of polluting the environment. So death and life are natural. Using something made of leather is also natural, provided you haven't made a horrific industry of it um, just to do some random killing through factories. Our people who work with their hands and if human beings cannot work with their hands, you cannot have a sustainable world. We need machines for certain things. Yes, we do. Human beings have only so many needs. There's another very nice story. There's this wonderful old singer from Pakistan, Pathane Khan. You can check him out. He has a beautiful song, which I learned because I just love his music. It goes, so this is him talking to the other. You, you are the beloved. You are also the friend. You are the body. You are also the soul. You are my body. You are my soul. You are my friend. You are my beloved. Later on he says, you are also my dharam. You are also my karam. You are also my sharam. You are also my shan. He's a beautiful singer. So you can check him out. Website. Google Pathane Khan. Now there's a very nice story about him and the shoe. So he was a man who was like all singers, a Sufi guy and not so interested in the world, but he was so famous and so sought after and people used to beg him to come to their mansions and do concerts. So he was invited by a very wealthy man to do a concert in that person's house. So when he reached that person's house, he took his footwear off outside, his juttis. Do you know what Jutti say? Jutti. Oh, those who understand Punjabi, you know, it's like juttis. So Leather made juttis which he'd been wearing forever. So when the host saw the jutti, it was patched. It had holes, it had been patched over with another bit of leather. And so he said, you know, this great singer, this man who we all bow to, cannot be wearing these shabby patched over leather juttis. So he immediately sent his servants and said, go to the market and get him the most get the most expensive, beautiful pair of juttis, again of leather, but just bring them. So Patane Khan finished his concert and he came out and he started looking for his footwear, his old juttis, and they said, they're not there, and he's saying, where are my juttis? And he says, but you know, those are torn and gone and worn, and so we've got you new ones. So please try them out. He says, no, 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 no. I don't want these new ones. I want the old ones. They know my feet. Oh, mere pair nu pachande ne. They know my feet. They love my feet. They understand my feet, my old juttis. So when you have something that's organic, made with hands, it also becomes a part of your body. So from there begins the idea that if you look at my Instagram account, there are, there are four A's that I have talked about. The first is acting. Then there is agriculture, there's Ayurveda, and there's architecture. These are the four A's that I've believed in for a very, many a very, very long time. It just came about naturally. Today they have shops of organic products, selling organic this, organic that. But when I was a kid, um, my aunt would actually get the wheat 
ground coarsely because the fiber should not get lost. These were practices. We are talking today about we need to save the planet, we need to save the world. But you know what? The knowledge has been there for thousands of years, especially in our subcontinent. The Asian intelligence goes way back. It goes to thousands of years. Why architecture? You will say, what does architecture have to do with acting or with being an an actress? Architecture for me, it's like if I'm wearing this, this is made of wool. It has a silk lining inside. So I have a skin, which is a clothing for my organs, my body. If I realize the soul is a clothing for the soul, then you have the body, you have your clothes. What is the other clothing that you occupy that you get inside? It's your architectural space. It's the house that you live in. This house you live in, and it's frightening. For example, even your poster has all this, right? These are the horrors of today's construction and the way our body is entering a space that is not. It's like you cannot actually wear a dress made of plastic, would you? Against your skin. But we enter a house which is made of the most horrific mixture of chemicals. And we have a lot of steel and a lot of glass, and we have Italian marble floor tiles. You know, my house in Bombay almost broke my leg just day before yesterday because as soon as I got out of the bathroom, my foot was slightly wet and I almost skidded, and my toe is still hurting because it got jammed there. So we, if I was to fall in my house, will this house? Hold me, or will it damage me? So one of the ways of preventing this crazy eruption of 40-story buildings, first of all, it takes you too far away from the center of gravity. You cannot live your entire life so far removed from the center of gravity. On some 8th, 50th, 40th, 30th floor, you will start feeling woozy and slightly detached from reality after some time. It's a scientific fact, which is why houses were never really made. The other thing in the early days was the houses were made of solid earth organic materials. You used bricks that were baked in clins. There was a way of structuring them without using too much cement. You had great craftspeople who could actually build. A circular roof without using any pillars because of the way they cut the brick and layered it together. You didn't need pillars. You didn't need so much cement either. You didn't need so much steel. You needed a basic grid, and there was the skills. So if you study Vedic architecture, which goes into thousands of years ago in India, I've always been fascinated by architecture. When I was a 17-year-old, I lived in Chandigarh, and I there was a Fontana book. You know, there's a Fontana books used to come. One Fontana book was about Le Corbusier, who designed Chandigarh, the architect, French architect, and it was all about his concepts of design and how the modular man was the basic feature of design, and that is exactly something that has actually been taken from our Vedic traditions of architecture, where the design principle extends from the human body and its proportions and its needs. Today, buildings are designed for you to go inside them. They have nothing to do with you. They have to do with how much money the builder is making, and and the whole thing down the line. So today, when I'm in Bombay, one of the reasons I, s- when people say, "Oh, you can buy a flat over here," it's a 25-story or a 40-story building. Buy a flat; it's cheaper. And I say no. I say no, not because, you know, I can't af- maybe afford the flat. I say no because I refuse to live in a 40-story building. I don't want such buildings. So Vedic architecture actually has already the knowledge. What was there in the earlier houses? There, each wall used to be about two and a half feet thick. That many bricks were used to make a two and a half feet thick wall, and then there was a little space left outside, and then there was a thin, thin wall made of just a single layer of bricks, which had. Spaces in it, like a jali, which you find in your Mughal architecture and all that. We think it's all very pretty, but it was actually very scientifically designed. 
Now, what happens with these kind of houses is we had verandas. Do you remember? Your grandparents' houses will have verandas. They will have long awnings. They will have high ceilings. On the top, between the ceiling and the wall, there would be a little ventilator. We used to use a ventilator, pulling and shutting danda to actually steal mangoes from the neighbors' trees as kids. You know, those used to have these two hooks, so you would just pull it out. So that, what does it do? If you're students of science, what happens when the air heats up? Come on, any students of science here? What happens when air heats up? It goes up. If there is a ventilator hole there, what happens? It goes out. What happens to your house? It cools down. Do you need an AC? You don't. In the winter, what happens to a thick wall when the sun comes? And the, there was also a sense of direction where the house, how the house should be built. It should take the morning sun and the evening sun. So what happens maybe to a building also where the sun comes the whole day long in in a cold northern part of the country? That thick wall heats up. It takes a long time to cool down. By that time, the night is over. What happens inside the house in winter? It's warm. You don't need to use so many heaters. That is sustainability. You can't talk about sustainability and not destroying the world and carry on building towers and putting EMIs. Oh, let me put my EMI. That's in a new space coming up in Gurgaon, 40 stories. So. Our generation, I'm 62, so my generation must have invested in all that for my kids, etc. You don't make that mistake. You know? So architecture, and this is not something new. This was planned down to a T. You will find it in our Vedic architecture. It is still present in architects in the South. If any of you is interested in a sustainable world, learn about what should be the architecture of a city. Some years ago, the Western world wanted to actually put, um, you, what, what do they call it? Patent our Haldi and Neem. Do you know that? Fortunately, somebody in our government woke up really fast and prevented that. Haldi and Neem go back centuries. They are healers. Our Indian food of style of cooking is full of things that prevent disease. That is why they put haldi in this. That's why they put heeng, astafatida, in the food. It's because those are natural preventers of, of the building up of gas or vata and things like that. Now we say, who wants haldi? It's so horrible, it stains my nail paint. But actually, it is something that these guys wanted to patent because it has just such powerful healing properties. So a lot of what you want to do with environment and to do is not to go out there and say, we're going to make a new world. Let's just get back to that old world. The knowledge is all there. So I'd like to leave you with this, with these thoughts. Just think about them. And you'll find your answers. Find your answers. So there are a lot of things I could talk about, but there's, it's too much because everything is so connected. So I will stop here, but I'm leaving you with these thoughts of why you need to pay attention, why you need to actually go and re rediscover and learn. And these are scientific things. You cannot learn Vedic architecture in two pages. You'll have to, first of all, understand Sanskrit to really know the paradigms and the scientific things of why things were dug the way they were, why they're put. How do you make a home which is cool in the summer and warm in the winter? Um, and has enough breathing space in which you fall, it'll hold you and not hurt you. you know? So build a home that holds you, doesn't hurt you. And build a world that holds you, doesn't hurt you. You can only do that by actually harking back to a lot of scientific knowledge we already have. The world is not lost. Just go back a little, dig it all out. Right, thank you very much.